When faced with a complex subject to teach to students, some teachers use the jigsaw approach to making the information accessible and interesting to their students. Jigsaw, like a puzzle, creates a final product by assembling pieces of information. Students are divided into groups. Each member of the group learns a part of the information and teaches it to the group. Jigsaw can be further differentiated for students by giving them different materials and content to match various levels of learning readiness. Now let's watch as teacher Janet Valadez introduces the lesson. My name is Janet Valadez and today our class is working on science and we're covering the solar system. In the beginning we started with uh, the moon and we covered it um, thoroughly so that the children would understand how to research a subject and find information um, beginning with what they wanted to know and what they already knew. And now they have the opportunity to create their own newsletter and or a newspaper where they're going to um, write in a news form about different parts of the solar system. They each um, were able to choose a particular uh, portion of uh, the solar system. They'll be working on finding out about different planets, asteroids, galaxies, and um, finding out about those uh, different variations. And then they'll be putting it together in a news report to share with the rest of the class. Boys and girls, I like how you all came in and sat down so nicely. And I want you to just begin thinking about the group that you're in and the subject that you chose or topic that you chose for the solar system. How many of you remember when we went over extensively, you chose your different um, jobs? Do you remember the tasks that you chose? Okay. Raise your hand if you're an illustrator. Okay. Raise your hand if you are the reporter. I see some of you are helping each other. That's good. That's good. Raise your hand if you are the organizer. Okay. And raise your hand if you're the writer. Okay. Now. What I want you to do is share with your neighbor what your job is to do before we get started on our group. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, some of you remember what your task is and some of you don't, and that's okay because what you can do is we will have you go to your groups and get started, and then um, we'll come around, Mrs. Rucker and I and Ms. Lute will come around and make sure that you understand which and you remember which job you have. Let's have, I'm you want to, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we'll have Venus right here and Earth right here. Right here. This is Earth at the fortune table. Um, Jupiter over here. Jupiter. Jupiter. In five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. Okay. We're going to give you um, a report paper where you can take notes and it kind of guides you through it so that you can look at it together and find information. It just has a guide of things that you can be looking for. But I have a question for you. If you find something interesting about your topic and you, and it's not on the guide, can you still add it to your report? What do you think? Okay. May I have a thumbs up if you would like to be able to add extra information from what your group decided? A thumbs sideways if you don't really care, and a thumbs down if you really don't want to add anything. Okay, let's do it then. What can you write on if you need, if you have extra information and you want to write it somewhere and there's no more room on the paper? What could you write it on? The back. 
Okay, the back's a great place because you won't lose it, huh? That's good. Okay. What is your topic made of X? What actually is your topic? Comets, asteroids, and meteors. Okay. Okay, how are you going to find information? By reading the book. Oh, okay. Well, okay. it's the man, they are or Boys and girls, this group um, did, a, did a great thing, and I want to share it with everybody. Um, they took the time to read all through the guide all the way through it first, because then they will know what they're looking for. And that's a, that's a great way to get started, you guys. Good job. So that's a good example for all of us, is go ahead and look through your guide and see what you have. And then as you're reading your book, you'll find that information, and you can jot it down on your paper. OK? Good job, you guys. What is it? What is its mass? What is the force of gravity for your topic? For instance, what would a 100-pound person weigh on your planet or topic? Does your topic orbit around the sun? If so, how long does it take? What special things have you discovered about your topic? When was your topic discovered? And who discovered it? So how are you going to find these things? In the book. Okay, so how are you, how are you going to work that out? Uh, we can read as groups. Okay. Read in as two groups. Okay. That's a good idea to break them up. That's a great idea. Okay. You can read one page and then all the book I told it doesn't have any. Okay, what is it? What it? Comets, asteroids, and comets. Okay, that's okay. But you know what? You might find something while you're waiting about how they decided on the name. How they, why they call it an asteroid, or why they call it a comet, or why they... You might come across something that tells you why they decided to name it that. Well, the air says they believe that these objects are leftover pieces of rock and ice from when the solar system formed. Formed, yeah. Astronauts think that the solar system began... We're going to continue to work on the research part of it, and then they will pull it together into a news article that will make it sound like it's something new and exciting, like uh, maybe from a different planet or a different galaxy is finding out about the solar system. And so um, it'll, it'll be on the idea of it being new and different and so that it'll be like a news flash that something's been found and, and this is what it's about. So all the information will be there. We're going to make a big mural in the end on the board over there uh, of our solar system. And each um, group will get to place on the mural their part of the solar system, which will be a lot of fun. And then there'll be a newsletter that'll go out to the school and the parents and everything. And they'll each have an illustration done with their article. They're not just learning, but it's going to be relevant to someone else. And it'll be important to them as they share their own knowledge with someone else. Parts of, parts of the soul in the center of the circle of gas might 
become might become a comet. The solar system is a very large place. Nine planets, in the, including Earth, travel around the sun or revolve in paths called orbits. Many of the planets also have moons. Other objects are part of our solar system too. They are called comets, asteroids, and meteors. Because this one, read that. Quantity. Quantity of matter does collection of this large quantity. We got it. Quantity. Good. Good. Look at that word. Okay. So, sis, what does that say? So, what do you think they're asking you about? Oh yeah, like like how much is it? How 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 big the size of it? There you go. So tell your group. Tell your group what you found. It it means mass means that it how like how stop stop what size is it? Okay, you gotta have the book out. We all have how much does it weigh? Hey, look. Oh yes. It's your turn to read the page. What is the size of your topic? What is its mass? How much are we doing again? I think it went well, uh, the fact that they just came back from uh, their spring break and were gone for all that time and it's the first day back. I think it went really well. I think they're excited about the information and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how much they find and now that they're learning how to use the guide, it took a little while for them to understand how to use that format. So they're not quite used to it yet. So, But I think it went well as far as they're talking about the uh, top their topics and enjoying it. I, I see my uh, really low strugglers uh, rise to a huge occasion at this time when they're able to be the writer or read to the other kids and help them and when they're struggling in other areas it gives them an opportunity to really shine. While Miss Valadez's students continue work on their solar system project, just down the hall, students in Rich Shepler's first grade classroom are about to begin one of their favorite parts of the school day, centers. Let's go over our centers for the day, a couple new ones. What you can choose. If you have a sticker, you know you have blocks in the hallway. There's a nice writing center with all the cute stuff out there. Something new. Raise your hand if you think you know what that might Music. mean. I didn't say raise your hand, call out. I said just raise your hand. Music. Now what the music one is, outside there, we've got a pocket chart. Just like the ones we have in here with our notes. And if you choose the music one, we're just going to start out with just the rhythm sticks. Now two ways you can play this. Or. Okay. Now, you have the card so you can mix them up, make your own songs. You might be with a partner, might be three of you. Well, we'll decide how many should be out there. But today, we're just going to start with just the tone, the sticks, so you know what to do. Okay, so we'll take that out there. Now, let's see why I have the pen is, how many people think can do music reasonably well? How many people do you think? Brandon, how many think people should be able to do that? Four. Four? Okay, you think four people that they could play pretty well? Someone got some other ideas, Tyler? Four? Oh, five. Okay. Set? Well, I think um, three people can do music. Three. So we got three, four, five. Let's see, let's see what would make sense. Someone's got some ideas, some reasons. Eden? Um, I think there should be two people because if there's like five people or four, then it would be too much and they'd say, oh, no, I want to do it that way. Oh, yeah, so there might be some arguing going on, huh? How many people agree? I agree. Okay. I agree. 
Shall we just start today with two? And if we think two works pretty, you said two? Two? Shall we start with two and then um, if we can maybe up it to three, we could try three later? Okay, I'll just put a two here because I'm not going to put a sticker on the card just yet. So, we'll add that one. So we got music, those three things in the hallway. In here we have games. We've got writing in here, paired reading, our chart, our uh, pocket chart. We brought an easel in. Now, Miss Collie and I were thinking, we have the bulletin board over there. It's kind of blank, just black with a little border. And we thought Queen Eden, who was in the bathtub, that great story of ours, we need some characters from there. Who do we remember? What were, uh, let's see, we did have Queen Eden. And, me, and King, and, and King Rolling. Oh, that's right, there was King. And King Rolling. And the Duke. No, no. <laughs> no. Uh, we had Duke. Uh, but, and we put any names in there for fun. But you're going to do like we do where you can go to the easel. And we have, I didn't put a number there, but there's two spots. And these are some of the pictures you want to create. So like we did Mr. with, Shepherd. excuse me, I didn't say interrupt. Just like we did with Hansel and Gretel, you've got, you can pick some of those and, and put the name, your name on it. And then we'll see which one we like the best to put up on our bulletin board up there. Then we got drawing center, which I need to bring some things out. Read around the room, book browsing. Now, we did find some people found some new name tags. Here's Alexis's. Got your picture on. These are brand new. Uh, let's see. If you want to, how many people would like to use your picture name tag today? Okay, you can decide which one you want. And you'll come get your name tag, put it in the spot. Oh, you know what? Paired reading. We don't have a number for paired reading. Let's see. If it's a pair, it has to be an even number. Two, four, six. Two, four, six? Four, four, eight. Two, 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 four, six, eight. Two, two, two. Uh, you know what? Who said ten? Two. Let's go for ten because you know what? We've got five groups. That's two from each group. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So at least everybody from the group can do that. Not that everyone will choose that, but we'll put ten there. And for writing... You still have your articles if you want to work on them today. If not, you can choose another center. If you want to do your uh, thing for Chick-fil-A, Chick you can do that too. Who thinks they come up and make a good choice here? Uh, Seth, you have some good ideas. You want to come up and take your name tag and find a spot? Ariana and Cody? Eden Kendall? Oh, I was going to pick Aiden, but uh, Aiden's not sitting right. Tyler? Logan. There's no paint here. Oh, Miss Penny, what happened? We have paint on the other side? Okay. Two. There comes Cody and Kendall. Um, Brandon and Brian. Curtis, Emily. Mr. Shepler utilizes a wide range of learning and interest centers to meet the needs of his very diverse group of first graders. The use of centers is in itself a differentiated activity, allowing students to choose a subject appropriate to their interests and ability. Mr. Shepler has further differentiated the activity by providing alternative materials and levels of participation at each center. We asked Mr. Shepler to explain how he has structured his use of learning and interest centers. What we had here was a, a center time or a choice time for, for students, and they have multiple uh, things from which to choose from. Um, the basic structure is they have kind of like two setups, this setup and what's called the hallway setup. And what that amounts to is that only certain students can go to these. Those that have show, show me that they can be respectful of others, they can follow the rules, um, they don't run, they know how to resolve conflict. And it's about two-thirds of the class at this point. And eventually, usually it almost gets to the whole class. You always have a few that are very challenging. But these, they go out in the hallway and they can choose. Again, these are blocks. Um, there's a different, more advanced writing center. And then they have music where they actually create their own musical songs um, that they've worked in the, in the past. Over here in these centers are, are in the room, so they require a little closer supervision. 
We have games, which is a wide assortment of games. It could be literacy games, uh, math games, strategy games. And uh, I choose those by different levels of where the children are at. I have kids that are at a second grade reading level, some kids uh, late kindergarten, so I have games that match their different developmental levels. Uh, likewise, we have a writing center. Um, students can choose. They have pencils, paper, um, multiple things which they can do to choose different things to write about. They have journals they can write in. They can write their own stories. They can write poems, a wide range of things. Uh, this particular center is for paired reading. It's good to have kids uh, get together and read different stories to each other so they have an audience. Um, so there's paired reading and we have five different levels in the classroom. They can choose from the leveled readers, which are in different color-coded boxes, or they can choose from a wide selection of books that are um, of interest or theme related. This is a pocket chart. This changes. Uh, periodically and it has, in this case we have a, uh, one story, Hey Diddle Diddle, and it's cut up into sentence strips and they can rearrange it, um, read it, um, create their own to put in this pocket chart, so it's different things, another reading activity that they can do. Um, this one is painting. We have an easel uh, set up in the classroom and they can paint. Um, what we have here is characters from the story and their assignment at this point was just to recreate a character uh, one of these characters in the story and then from that we'll select from we'll pick one character there might be five different Queen Edens and the class will elect or choose which one they think fits our which will go onto our bulletin board later on what we'll do with that is that uh, we'll create through interactive writing a writing process the dialogue that goes with that that gets put on a board which in turn becomes one of these things which is read around the room and in this activity, they get a stick or a pointer and multiple things around the room at all different levels from ABCs to um, dialogue. They can read from the bulletin boards and uh, everything around the room they can read. Uh, this is a, a drawing center. Sometimes it's tied into the writing center. So if they want to illustrate a story or it could be just something they want to draw, paint, and whatever, they have multiple materials. I have some books, drawing books that they can use as references to look up different things to write on. Sometimes I require it to be related to a theme I'm working on, and sometimes not. They have some choice in that, so that varies. This is the book browsing box. Uh, typically, it's a theme-related uh, set of books or some very common, high popular books that they can choose from. Um, and that is what I have choices for today. What you see up here are other choices. Um, the stars are basically, sometimes I have a specific activity that's not fall into one of these categories, so we, we discuss what that is. Um, obviously computers, my computers are broken, so that's not available. Uh, drama Center, I've collected uh, uh, quite an assortment of basically just junk. It's dad's old ties, um, shirts, wigs, you name it. And that goes into assortment, and that, that's another activity that will sometimes be in the hallway where they go and they can create their own plays using stories we've uh, read or they can create their own and they will reenact them either in class or sometimes if they're really good we take it to a full production at the school. Uh, ABC, some of the word centers, we have uh, some you can see up here, word families and a whole different assortment of they have word sorting that goes with these uh, but I don't have those out right now. And so that includes those. A few other activities I do have over here I have literature circles, some of the kids that are really involved with literature uh, they meet to discuss books at many different levels. Um, music Center, um, we have that one out there. They can play music. Here they're creating their music. In the past I had this one out there. They already had the music set up and they just had to practice. Um, some more paired reading. Listening Center, um, put available magazines. Science, as you saw, I have a little cockroach. At times I'll have that out there so they can actually go and record, read, um, or you know, observe him. I used to have little uh, journals where we write about the animal, what they observe. Um, poem box, uh, reading journal, and then an um, overhead projector, which I don't have in here at the moment. So that pretty much explains um, what these sort of things are. Maybe one last thing is this. <clears throat> when they do go to the drawing center here, um, this is our drawing alphabet. And we've gone through this with the kids. You can see, just like with uh, your ABCs, you can spell any word in the English dictionary. You can draw anything that you can see by using these basically five shapes, five families of shapes. 
and then we always look at things, uh, it could be theme related, and then we take a look at it and we see if we can find those shapes. We use those shapes to recreate the pictures. And you could probably see some of the some of their artwork there, some of their artwork. This is their art gallery here. And what goes up on this art gallery are different things kids have made. Um, and we go through a rubric which decides what sort of things that we need to see into a, a picture for it to get displayed into the uh, art gallery. And then the, the class decides what goes up. That's not my decision. Uh, this system I, I use daily. Um, I will have, um, it's usually anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on other activities I have through the day. Um, and this allows me, so 20, 30 minutes a day, allows me time to go work individually with kids and see how they're working. Always try to make contact with kids. Um, I have a system uh, either alphabetically or by number groups I go through so I know I, I meet every kid and have some little personal time with them through this time. Sometimes I also use this, since it's independent, I will do any of my assessments. So when you get close to report cards or so forth, you have to do running records, um, sight word vocabulary, and all the different assessments that you have to do. That's a very good time to do it because these kids pretty much run themselves at this point, so it frees me that time. But it is a daily um, part of my day. <laughs>